welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. I'm Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor of Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. Uh, on this second Sunday in the season of Advent, my church family welcomes you to this worship service, our elders, our deacons, and every single person in our congregation is thankful that you are present. We give thanks for your spiritual journey. We pray that God will bless you, and we look forward to meeting you as conditions permit with the present pandemic. I would mention very briefly to our congregation that we are in the middle of our stewardship campaign. If you have not yet uh, prepared a uh, pledge card that uh, you would uh, please do so. The session encourages all of us to pledge. We are holding the 2021 budget the same as the 2020 budget. Um, no staff member is getting a raise. We do, however, hope to increase our mission giving, especially to our local mission partners, the Family Crisis Shelter, the Youth Service Bureau, the Montgomery County Free Clinic, the Montgomery County Habitat for Humanity chapter and for the uh, recreation center for uh, persons in recovery uh, so that the recovery center where they have a place to go to have fun that doesn't involve temptation and uh, friends they don't need to hang out with. These are good, glad gospel causes and we are blessed to be able to participate with God in blessing them. So if you would please submit your pledge, we're asking everyone to please keep their pledges the same. If we can all do that, then uh, we'll be able to increase our mission giving and help our neighbors in need during this pandemic. And if you are a visitor watching this who's not a person, a member who is part of our church family, I urge you this Advent and Christmas season to make a generous gift to the charity or church or organization of your choice to alleviate suffering in God's world, to make way for Jesus Christ who is our savior, to make his way known, to make his way welcome, and to make all our ways in this life glad and blessed. So please join me now in our call to worship, which comes from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's way clear. Lift up every valley, lower every mountain, for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Our opening hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fights Swick.
now are called to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess that we have not lived lives of holiness. We are impatient and greedy. We have not labored for peace. We have misused the earth and threatened the life of your creation. We repent of these offenses and turn to you in love. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sins that we may walk in righteousness to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. He was born for us, he lived for us, he died for us, and he was raised for us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Anyone who is in Christ is a part of God's new creation. Behold, our old lives have already passed away and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. Amen. Our epistle lesson today comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. In accordance with God's promise, we wait for a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not to scandalize you, but there's a sacrilegious joke I want to tell you. Not to shock you, but to redeem its punchline. The joke, which is a riff on end-time Christianity, goes like this. Jesus is coming. Look busy. It's not a great joke, but I think it has a truth that can bless us. Jesus is coming. Look busy. Or better yet, get busy. Get to work doing what Jesus wants us to do to make this world welcome for him and for us all. That's what the season of Advent is all about. Advent is the season of preparation to make the way ready for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace. If only I was as intentional about doing that as Home Depot is. The first Christmas items arrived at Home Depot before Labor Day. 
go to Home Depot today and you'll find the place plastered with poinsettias and home decorations and artificial trees and on and on and on. If I was as serious about making Jesus welcome as Home Depot is in making a buck, my faith would really move mountains. The journalist Nicholas Kristof, every time this year, this season, has a column annually about alternative Christmas giving. This year he touted a project called Cure Blindness, which offers cataract surgery for poor people in Asia and Africa. $50 will restore a person's sight. Another organization, Campaign for Female Education, seeks to get African girls in school and out of child marriages. $150 will educate a girl for one year of high school. $30 will cover one year of elementary school. This program has enabled 157,000 young African women to get their education and to pay it forward because they are now mentoring and sponsoring another girl. Talk about changing the world. Yes, there is only one savior of the world, but by the grace of God, it is amazing what we can do to help in that saving work. The Youth Service Bureau's Reindeer Project, the local CASA program, court appointed special advocates who work to make sure that minors are looked out for in the judicial process. Sponsoring a child through Compassion International Think of all the wonderful ways we can be about the Lord's work by making things just a little bit more right and just and loving. See if you can include some alternative Christmas gifts in your gifting this year. Instead of another sweater, Uncle Harold might really like a Heifer Project duck. Cousin Mary might appreciate being given a gift in her name rather than receiving a gift herself. Try it and see how that changes the feel and meaning of Christmas for you and your loved ones for good. We're in the middle of a pandemic, an economic crisis, and a poisonous political climate. All of that can make all of us feel pretty powerless. After all, you or I, none of us, we're, we're not going to come up with a cure for the coronavirus. But we can wear a mask. We can practice social distancing. We can adopt those habits that will halt the spread of the, the disease while we wait for the vaccine which, thanks be to God, is on the way. Doing what we can do while we wait is a God-given power all of us have. And that's what God wants us to do at, while we wait for God's kingdom to come in full. We are to anticipate that reality, which only God can bring. By doing those things, which only we can do. As we do what is within our power to do, we prepare the way and we hasten the day when our Savior fully reigns, when righteousness is truly at home, when this tired old universe and this sin-sick world are transformed into a new heavens, and a new earth. If you think that our power to prepare the way for something that big is just a lot of hype, then you have a bunch 
of geophysicists who would disagree with you. During the lockdown earlier this year, when we all stayed home, geologists who monitor tremors and watch for earthquakes reported that the lockdown actually decreased the surface tremors for the entire planet. Turns out when seven billion people do something small, it adds up to something pretty big. Don't underestimate what God can do and what God will do in and through you. Your actions have consequences. And when you act with God, eternally powerful things begin to happen. Getting sober, forgiving an enemy, burying a grudge, mentoring a child, living with hope, giving with love. These gospel acts are the basic building blocks of the kingdom of God. So, don't just spend this month getting ready for Christmas. Get ready for your Savior. Welcome Him. Don't wait passively. Do what you can, where you are, as God leads you. As you do, you will welcome Christ into your life, which shall be saved. And you will welcome Christ into the world, which shall be changed. Let us prepare the way. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we thank you for health and life and breath. Lord, we pray for our world during this season of pandemic. We give you thanks for the vaccine which is on the way. We pray, Lord, you will speed its approval and production and distribution so that we can all be immunized and get past the specter of COVID-19. We pray who, for all who are infected with the virus, we pray that you will restore them to health and to life. We pray for frontline and essential health care workers and other folks who are at risk while doing their jobs to keep us safe and to keep us uh, fed and working as a society during this difficult and uh, dangerous time. Protect them, we pray, as they serve to bless us. We ask your grace, O God, for our nation. We pray your blessings upon our community. Help us in this season to prepare the way for you by making room for those who have no place in the end, by blessing those who have been shut out in the cold, by sharing with those who are hungry, hurting and alone. Lord, let your love touch them through our compassion. We pray, O oh Lord, for all who are ill, asking you to pour out your healing blessings upon them. We ask your grace upon all who grieve, that Lord, during this season of holidays and holy days, when the absence of loved ones is most keenly felt, that you will pour out your healing and your presence and your peace upon all who mourn. We ask God your grace for all who suffer from depression, that Lord, during this season of uh, sunless days and shortened days, that Lord, you would grant them extra strength and energy, that you will help them to live with energy and purpose and joy. We ask, O oh Lord, your blessings for the ministries beyond our congregation housed in our facility. We remember and pray your blessings for the Fish Clothing Pantry, for the Montgomery School of Crawfordsville, for child and family counseling, and for all the recovery groups who use our facility. O oh Lord, bless those activities and persons 
so that greater healing, health, life, wholeness may abound in our community and beyond. We pray, O oh Lord, by name for our friends Alger, Autumn, for Lloyd, for Mandy and her family, for Noreen's friend Patricia, for Nancy and her family, for Kevin and Laura, for Kyle and Brittany as they grieve the death of their grandmother Margaret, for Bill and all of John Haynes's friends as they grieve his death. Bless, we pray, Jim and Becky, Joyce and her family as they grieve the death of Joyce's sister, her second mother, Leola. We ask your grace upon Helen Milligan's family as they grieve this season. Continue to help Nancy to heal. Bless Roger. Be with Betty and Dick. Be with Arlene as she uh, gets accustomed to a new home. Be with Stephanie and help her to recover from the coronavirus. Help Bridget's leg to heal. Be with Bill and Linda. Bless Don and Dottie as they grieve the recent death of their 20-year-old grandson, Evan, and as they continue to grieve the death of their 28-year-old grandson, Jacob. Be with Jordan, Brendan, Lindsay, and Sandra. Bless Jim and Jenny. Be with Betty, Peg, Alan. Be with Deb and Noreen's son, John, and his family. Bless Barb and Pam. And Lord, we would ask that you would also bless these persons and concerns that we now name silently before you. Oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by our choir director, Jenny Fight Swick.
Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge all of us to go forth into God's good world and prepare the way. Let us be the way so that the way, the truth, and the life can be born again through us and can be manifest in the world as light and love and peace. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen.